Hello, today we are going to discuss our church windows and we're going to be discussing the 12 windows that are in the nave of the church. Uh, each of the windows is an image of one of the 12 apostles and the windows tell stories of each of the apostles, something they did, how they died, uh, part of their ministry and, and part of their life in the history of the church. So as we go through each of these windows, we're going to point out a few of the uh, things that distinguish the windows and distinguish these saints. Our first window that we look at is the window of uh, St. John the Evangelist. And he was also, just to let us know, he was the youngest of the 12 apostles. And he's the only apostle that did not face martyrdom, although they did attempt to kill him at one point in time. And if you look towards the top of the window, you'll see that there is a chalice at the top and he was, his attempted martyrdom was that he was given poison wine to drink um, and he survived that and he continued to write the gospels, his letters and the book of Revelation. Towards the bottom of the window, we have the um, eagle and with a pen and a, and a scroll and this is to show that uh, John was one of the gospel writers and also an apostle. And if you look towards him, he's holding also a book and a pen to remind us that he is a gospel writer and also a letter writer and the author of the book of Revelation. Our second window, as we move down, is St. James, the son of Zebedee, who is also the brother of John. Now, James is called James the Greater, uh, as opposed to the other James, who is James the Less, not because one was better than the other, but James the Greater happened to be older. If we look towards the window, we see towards the bottom, the sword that has gone through his neck. And that is uh, a reminder of us, of um, how he was martyred. Up top, if you look towards the upper part, you'll see that there are shells and also the oil lantern. And that was to show of his um, missionary spirit and that he went to Spain uh, to preach the Gospels. Our third window is that of St. Jude Thaddeus, or Thaddeus Jude. Um, he is depicted holding a pen, uh, a quill in his hand, because he's an uh, author of one of the letters in the New Testament. The very top of the window shows the, the lance or the spear. Uh, that reminds us of how he was martyred. And at the base of the window, we have the flame um, coming uh, uh, at, the, at the base here. And he is very much depicted many times with the flame of the Holy Spirit coming out um, on the day of Pentecost. And the bottom base here shows the people of Jerusalem who were converted on that day of Pentecost. Here we have the window of James the Less, the son of Alphaeus. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of the picture, the city of Jerusalem, the bishop's staff and the bishop's hat, the mitre. Um, these are symbols that he was the bishop of Jerusalem. At the very top of the, of the window, you can see that his, his martyrdom, uh, which took place uh, early on in the church. He's also, as he is holding a quill, is a reminder that he too was also um, one of a uh, recipient of the letters of uh, Saint Saint Paul. Here is our window of Saint Simon, who is also called the Zealot. The Zealots were one of the four. Uh, Jewish parties that existed at the time of Jesus, they were interested in restoring um, 
Israel to the time of King David. And so they were very militaristic. Um, and you'll see as he is holding his instrument of death, he has the, the, the saw in his hand and down towards the bottom of the window, you see the visitation of the angel uh, to him. And the very top of the window is the cross um, and a symbol of his resurrection, his, his um, sainthood as he entered into the kingdom. Uh, here in this window is Simon is holding the staff and the shell. The shell, the symbol of baptism, and the staff, the symbol of his authority as one of the 12 apostles. This window is the window of St. Andrew. St. Andrew is the first of the apostles called. Andrew is holding the two pieces of wood in the shape of an X. Uh, and that is to show how he faced his martyrdom uh, during the time of the early church. At the top of the window, you'll see there is a ship and it shows uh, his apostolic journey, how he traveled the seas to bring the gospel to other parts of the world. Here we have the window of St. Philip the Apostle. The window is important to the parish because so his relics are in the high altar um, here in the church. Um, in the altar stone, we have um, relics of his bone, uh, which are encased in the high altar. We see here with, um, with St. Philip, he has, uh, again, um, at the base is the sword, which was his um, instrument of his martyrdom, but also we see the scripture here that says, and Jesus said, Philip, he who sees me sees also the Father. So if you look at the top of the window, you'll see the encounter between Jesus and Philip in that dialogue. Philip is also known for the imagery of the, the loaves and the fishes. Um, not so much depicted here in the window, but it is part of his apostolic tradition in the church. <laughs> Here we have the window to St. Thomas. St. Thomas is known to be the Doubting Thomas. If you look towards the base of the window here, you see that his hand is going into the heart of Jesus, into his side. He who didn't believe was challenged by the law to take his hand and place it into the nail marks and into the side from the wounds of the crucifixion. If you look up towards the, the top of the window, you will see that he was uh, martyred by the hatchet and halberd. Um, and this becomes uh, his imagery. Also, by tradition, St. Thomas is the apostle who went to India to spread the faith. And so you'll see also in, in the window the, the uh, compass and the, the nautical map uh, as an image of his missionary journey. St. Matthias is the apostle that was chosen to replace Judas. And he was chosen by the apostles after the resurrection and the ascension of the Lord. But he was chosen because he had had an experience of the resurrected Jesus and was part of the ministry of the Lord as he had walked upon the earth. If we look towards the, the window, we'll see up top the battle ax, which was a, a symbol of his martyrdom and he's also holding a book with the scriptures and he's the staff which speaks to us about his missionary journey and his walking through the Holy Land uh, spreading the gospel um, and uh, proclaiming the good news of the resurrection.
Here we have the window of St. Matthew the Apostle. And we'll see that St. Matthew is holding on to the spear or the lance, which is the instrument of his death. Towards the top and the bottom of the window, we see that um, he is um, the books and the, and the pen to show that he is one of the evangelists and the gospel writers. The symbol at the bottom of the window is that of the winged man, which is the symbol that uh, for the Gospel of St. Matthew. St. Matthew was also the tax collector and he was known uh, by the Lord and was given to ministry and he became the one who was by tradition held as the first Gospel writer although most likely he wrote his Gospel a little bit later. Much of the church depends upon the Gospel of Matthew especially for the nativity um, and the early parts of the Lord's life. St. Bartholomew, or also called Nathaniel, um, we see that he's holding the money purse, and if you look towards the base of the window, you see the knife by tradition uh, he was filleted um, in his martyrdom. And up top you will see um, the, the imagery of how he um, went about and taking care of uh, those who were in need. He, or because he held the money purse, he was the one that was responsible to make sure that the, the widows and the orphans in the early Christian community always had their needs taken care of. Our final window today is that of St. Peter, the apostle and the prince of the apostles. The Lord tells us that he will build his church upon him. At the base of the window, you have the keys, the keys of the kingdom. The Lord had given the apostles the ability to forgive sins, and he had told them that they, whatever sin they forgave would be forgiven in heaven, whatever sin they held will be held in heaven. On the very top of the window, you'll see that the cross is upside down, and there is the tiara, the crown of the Pope. The cross is upside down because when St. Peter faced his martyrdom, he did not view himself to be worthy to die the same way that Jesus did. And so he asked and chose to be crucified upside down. In this window, he is also holding the keys um, and he's holding the scripture, reminding us that it's, the gospel is the way to life and it is Jesus who gives us the ability to enter into the kingdom by, the ops, the, by being absolved of our sin and to come into uh, the gift of the resurrection. So these are the 12 windows. We come into church very often and we see them. We really don't know why the symbols are there. So we hope in this brief video, it gives you a little idea of what the windows are all about. It's always great on a bright sunny day, especially when the children are in church, they look at the color of the windows and they, they spend a long time uh, just staring at them. But each of the windows tells us a history of our, of our church and of the men who founded the church. Remember, we said that the church is one holy Catholic and apostolic, meaning that we have founded on the teaching of the 12 apostles. Thank you for spending some time with us today.